The one thing that we could say about African peoples is that we left evidence of ourselves all over this planet. And that's the problem with European scientists. The deeper they dig, the blacker the planet gets. You won't find a monument anywhere prior to 1500 that isn't Africoid in some way, shape, form. People think Africa and, and Asia and uh, Guatemala, Southern America, these places were all jungle. Jungle came after the invasions of, of European colonialism, then the jungles came in because nobody was manning the land anymore. I'm an African American. Africa is my race, America is my geopolitical place. I'm not surrendering that to anybody. The monument that we know is Stonehenge. A European writer by the name of Gerald Massey said in one of his books that Stonehenge was built by an African man named Morian. The letter, J, let me say this again, the letter J was not invented until the 1600s. So the reality is, Jesus is not the name of that person. Studies have consistently shown now for decades that people of color are no more likely to use or sell illegal drugs than whites. You're destined to be a planned minority. You know what a minority means? That means a loser. It means you're a loser. Black folk don't have a problem. White folk got a problem. Black folk problem is that white folk got a problem. The real problem we have is white supremacy. The 13th Amendment reads, slavery is abolished except when you are found guilty of a crime and go to jail. So prison is the slave plantation. And look at all the things that are denied you in jail is the same thing that were denied Africans on the plantation. Slavery still is very much alive. Today, uh, there are more African-American adults under correctional control in prison or jail on probation or parole than were enslaved in 1850, a decade before the Civil War began. Crime and crime rates did not drive mass incarceration to begin with. Um, you know, incarceration rates have fluctuated over the years, gone up, gone down today, you know, are actually at historical lows. But incarceration rates, especially black incarceration rates, have consistently soared regardless of whether crime is going up or going down in any given community or the nation as a whole. War on drugs, which has been a major engine of mass incarceration, has targeted poor communities of color, especially black and brown men, even though studies have consistently shown now for decades 
that people of color are no more likely to use or sell illegal drugs than white. Before 1964, the prison rate in America, the majority of people in prison were white people, were white guys. But the thing is, there was no need to have a strong police presence in the black community because black people were already controlled by the basic laws of the, of the land. Black people were already controlled by Jim Crow laws, signs saying black people drink from this water fountain, black people couldn't live in this neighborhood. So black people were just controlled, period, at that time. Now, after the Civil Rights Bill passed in 1964, this is when the police presence became very strong in the black community because the average citizen couldn't control black people like they could before then. So they came up with another strategy and had law enforcement do it. So around 1964, 65, black communities were flooded with law enforcement. And this is why the Black Panthers were started because of the police brutality that had started in the black community. Prisoners themselves represent a small percentage of the population under correctional control. Like today, there's about 7.6 million people under correctional control, but only about 1.3 million are in prison of that. The rest are on probation, parole, and jail overwhelmingly for you know, minor nonviolent offenses and drug offenses. The problem is, is that even if you don't get prison time, even if you're lucky enough to get just felony probation, you're saddled for the rest of your life with a felony record. And so the question isn't, in my view, just who's in prison. The question is, who is branded a criminal or felon and must live with that label for the rest of their lives? The people said, well, if we don't need black labor anymore, what do we do with it? Well, we have to set up a system in the commercial, in the commercial system, or at least incorporate black people into the commercial system so that they make us money without having to do the labor of you know, picking cotton or picking sugar cane or whatever. We already passed that. So how do we make a more sophisticated plantation where we can keep slaves? Well, let's criminalize pretty much every damn thing that we do. There are over a million laws on the books now. Who needs a million laws unless you want to control people's behavior? The police presence has always been in the black community because we are prisoners of war. That's number one. The original police were created to catch slaves. They were slave catchers. There was no need to police a white society. There was no need for that in early America. There was no need for that. Police even became wild when uh, it, police were always about guarding property. That's what the police are about, guarding property. That's it. Their job gets stretched out to a moral responsibility and public safety uh, and that kind of thing later on in their development. But the original concept of a police officer is to make sure your property stays with you. They are hired by the rich, first of all to protect the richest property. told you to be unheard and unseen, invisible. Lord, you're making them damn sure the animals in Mississippi by now. Yes, sir. Now, we in the water, so you don't hear us coming. That's a smart animal. You see, you smell, 
And here you come. So you got to be smarter. Yes, Daddy. You understand me? Yeah, yes, you got Daddy. got to be smarter. Yes, sir. You think this is fooling around? You got to respect this. Some nights, your brain is good. That's why I put dinner on the table. It's about survival. It's all right. Huh? We almost got him. What's wrong, Daddy? Yeah. Quiet, Marcus. Don't make a sound. You live, I never see that. What's well, done now? Don't ever forget it, Marcus. Don't ever forget it. Chair off the table. Come on now, finish up. You gotta do better than that, Daddy. One more bite. Come on. Uh, nobody know I'm here. <sighs> Come on now, Daddy. I'm doing it right Honestly, now. I can do it myself. Be still. One bite. Brooks, quit fooling around with your food. Go out and get your books and get the hell on out of here. Are you gonna try to work tonight? No. Come on, give me a kiss. See you when I get home, Papa. I didn't think you knew I was here. Lucille, what's that on your blouse? It's from the Civil Rights League office. I thought the sheriff closed that office down. Kids at school say they're going to open it up again. I don't give a damn. Take it off. But, Dad, it's Take just it a off pit. or I rip it off. I go. Go on.
team as well. How you feel? Feeling good since I passed that stone. Oh, that is pain. Oh, boy, that is pain. You never knew that kind of hurt. No, so Miss Connelly, I've never known that kind of hurt. Five orders on the board. I want them packed and on the road before lunch. Yes, sir. Forklift knocked a stack of bales off their pallets. Clean it up. Yes, sir. Y'all have a good day. I'm sure glad you're here, man. This place been running like a crapper all morning. We need to get rolled. All right. Let's start this up. 52 bales. Bay two. Let me bring this back up. Come on. Morning, Marcus. How you doing, man? Feeling pretty good. good. How's your daddy? I'm feeding, so he's eating more. That's good. Hey, 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 TJ, man. My sister-in-law's coming up from New Orleans again. Why don't you come over for dinner? No. Man, what? You afraid of marriage, huh? You sit around the house getting fat? Huh? Oh, why not? Because I done seen your in-law. Hey, 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 hey. Try to do something good for you. Look what you do, man. Pull this back on. Hey, our shift don't stop for two minutes. Pull it back. Come on. Man, ain't gonna pay us more for work in two minutes more, you know? <laughs> Be in your money. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You got five orders to see. Here we are. So this is it, huh? This is it. Very nice. Is that a bullet hole? Shotgun. Okay. Where do we start? Well, tomorrow we get Louisiana driver's license. That way, if we get stopped, we don't get hassled none. We are definitely gonna have to move these beds away from the windows. You know why? Less chance of getting shot at. Here, we'll tack these up against the windows so we can actually turn the lights on at night, and then all we gotta do is find a safe exit out of here in case the place gets bombed or catches fire somehow. You okay? That's a white one best. We don't have it in the five and three quarters. But we can own it. Excuse me. Can I help you? I'm, I'm just looking. Thank you, Mia. You put that hat on your head, you buy it. Thank you, ma'am. Here we are. Negro just sent out the higher paid jobs here. Can you hear me? Get out of here. We want to talk to this paper plan. We want to set up protests. Hey, we how you doing? Hey, we're, we're here to take this past the lower chain case. Hi, how you doing? My name is Charlie. I'm from the Civil Rights Office. We're trying to end segregation in public places. We're with the National Civil Rights League. And the hey, my name is Charlie. Charlie from the Civil Committee. Rights We're going to be at the church on Sunday. We'd love to have the opportunity to talk to you. I think you may be interested in what civil we have to say. Hi, we're the National Civil Rights League. We're trying to end segregation in public places. We're going to be at the Baptist Church hey, on Sunday. Hey, hi, how you doing? have the opportunity to talk to you. Now, hold on. You may be interested in what I have to say. This plan does not give you the opportunity to advance past the low menial jobs. We're planning on protesting. Setting up boycotts for the white businesses that do not hire black workers. Hi. Please come to the church on Sunday. We're going to have the opportunity to talk to you. We're going to set up boycotts in the White House. Morning. We have two young men from 
up north. And they're going to reopen the National Civil Rights League office. And they asked for a minute of our time. Mr. Dean, please come forward. Ladies and gentlemen of the church, Reverend Gregory, deacons, elders, trustees, thank you for granting us this opportunity to speak to you today. My name is Michael Dean, and this is my colleague, Charles Hillenbrand. I've been an attorney for eight years. I teach at Columbia University in New York. I have spent a great deal of time working in the South, fighting for a cause that I believe in from the bottom of my heart. I'm and that is for a movement of non-violent integration. Integration into the public schools. Integration into the workplace. Now, I have seen change occur all over the South. And I know if we work hard together, we can make those changes happen right here in Bogalusa, Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. I am here to help you. Uh, excuse me. With your permission, Reverend Gregory. You have my permission. Mr. Dean, are you aware that the last man that the National Civil Rights League sent down here, Brother Moon, left town in the middle of the night? They firebombed his house. He didn't really understand what was going on down here. I'm aware that Brother Moon was disrespectfully removed from this community. But, sir, I do understand what is going on. I went to Mississippi when Goodman, Cheney, and Schwerner were missing. And I was there when their bodies were dragged out of the water. The Klan in this part of the country is extremely violent. We protest, they bust our heads open. And the newspapers don't even take pictures of it. So how are you gonna get us national exposure? Well, we do what Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. does. We get our younger people involved in the marches. We get our younger people involved in the protests. Now, believe me, if anyone should try and attack them, the press will be here. Permission to speak, Reverend Gregory? Speak, son. Now, no disrespect to the elders, but as a young person of the church, I have been following the changes these men have been talking about. Now, I think if we want Bogalusa to change, now's the time. And, and, and why not here? You know, Reverend King was only 26 years old during the Montgomery bus boycotts. The people our age have been changing things all over the South. Yeah. There will be violence. Now, can I guarantee that no one is going to get hurt? No, I can't. But I can guarantee that if there are blows to be taken, I will take the first blows. Thank you. All right. Set her down. This man is talking about our children. Our children. And that not only gives us something to think about, but something also to pray about. Marcus, you didn't even hear what the man had to say. That boy's got some pretty good ideas. He's gonna bring some folks in from up north, and they can make a change. Because I'm getting damn tired of the way it is. I'm telling you, Marcus, God's with us. How much did God help those little girls in Birmingham? Hi. I'm Michael Dean. Timothy McDaniels, call me TJ. Archie, Archie Scott. What can we do? I want to talk to you about setting up some boycotts. You're on your own with this one, TJ. And together, we could change the conditions at that plant. What you have in mind? Lucille, let's go. I'm gone. Oh, come on, Marcus. You ready? Come on. I want to drive a truck at the plant. I worked in transport in Korea. I'll be a loading supervisor. What do I have to do to get it? Tell me how it works down there. Well, right now, all the supervisors are, are white. No black can apply for it. Most of the blacks are in menial jobs, low pay. It's real bad. What's that, Mr. Weber? Sign up chief for loading supervisor. Extra 50 cents an hour. Come on, Kenny. Extra 50 cents an hour should keep you on your butt. 50 cents an hour? Hell, I can live with that. It's not for you, boys. Come on, TJ, let's go home. Come on, TJ. Yeah, you're right. I ain't gonna take no more. Where you going? TJ.
doing, TJ? Sign in my name. TJ, you need to come down here. Come on down. Mr. Weber. TJ, you can't put your name up there. Now, you know that. Why not? Collins don't do the supervisor positions. You understand that? That's the first time for everything, Mr. Weber. Better have a talk with your ball, Marcus. Yes, yes, Mr. Weber. I'm gonna talk to him. I'll talk to him. Excuse me, what in the name of the holy God got into you? You going crazy? You get us all killed. Fear the night, niggas. Fear the night. Hey, dude. How you feel? I'm okay for a man with a stroke. Where's everybody? Well, hey to you, too. Sorry, I'm just hungry or something. Lucille! Brooks! Supper's on, let's go. She's not home. Where is she? Where is she, Rose? She's at the Civil Rights League office with the two white boys. Look at here, you're gonna have to give her a little room on this. Oh, no, I don't. Now, Reverend King has used people our age in the past. We can march and we can protest, but nobody's gonna change our city except ourselves. Now, we need to get every Negro person voting in Bogalusa. But all due respect, the Negro Voters League run by Reverend Gregory is completely ineffective. Now, keep in mind what we're talking about. Goodman, Cheney, and Schwerner were just murdered for doing exactly what we're discussing. So I want everyone to talk to their parents. I want everyone to think about the potential dangers involved. Don't go into this lightly, okay? Lucille, come on. Excuse me, I gotta go. Daddy. Shut up. You're gonna deal with this when you get home. If I find you near her, talking to her, getting her involved in any way, I'm gonna slap the taste out your mouth. Let's go. Well, well, what do we have here? Y'all gonna have to cease and desist. We're closing this office down once again. You are not permitted to practice law in the state of Louisiana. Am I correct? Yes, you are correct. Yeah, well, you want to close the doors or you want to go to jail? Sir, while we are not members of the Louisiana Bar, state law does allow us to disseminate our legal opinions so long as we don't attempt to actually practice law or have ourselves passed off as state-sanctioned attorneys. All right, we'll let the court decide. Cuff them. This building is the private property of a non-profit organization. By interfering with our organization, you are in direct violation of several city and state codes. All right. I want this place cleared out. Or else you follow the jail. We are going. You don't want to see you here anymore. All right? Oh, what the hell are you doing here? I'm just getting my dog. Talk to these people. I don't want to see them here again. All right? I don't want to have to arrest them. Yes, sir. Reverend Gregory, you know what you're doing? You be careful. You be real careful. Taking your name off that list tomorrow. You hear me? Marcus! Yeah. 
ain't hurting us because you got the same skin color as God. But this is a one-time pass. Remember what happened to those northern boys in Mississippi. Y'all know which way to go. You've got to be kidding me! No, I'm not kidding. They're not fooling around, Michael. They will kill us. Yeah. Why are you willing to die for this? Do you hear me? Why, Charlie? Because our skin is not the same color as God's. It's okay. I respect you. you. Take care of yourself. Michael, I'm not like you. I want to get married and live to see my children, god damn it! God damn it! Sorry about I heard I should have helped. I know your heart, Marcus. Besides, you got a family. I should have known better. Get you to the hospital. You all right? Scared. Don't be scared, Daddy. God's with you. You.
5% of Bogalusa's downtown business. But none of those businesses will hire Negro workers. Now they're going to be people who will try and provoke us. People who will try and intimidate us. Make us give in. Make us go home. We not going home. Just get the hell off of us. This is a decent town. Look out the window, Mr. Mayor. People coming in to do the shop, do the bank. They see what's going on down there. They're not even parking. Now, I'm not fooling around with this. We are losing a lot of business, Sam. We need you to end it now. Clarence, it's not that simple. Just arrest them. It's not going to work. They're minors. These charges aren't going to mean a damn thing to them. I'll just say the word. We got clubs. We got tear gas. They won't come back. Find me a legal reason I can do it. Throw a dart. They're threatening city property. Good enough. Do it the old-fashioned way. Walter, I don't want this in Bogalusa. <laughs> your mouth, I swear to God, I'm gonna knock some sense No! Out. He hit me, Daddy! Your daughter! Get me in the white man, not me! No! Get in the lodge, you don't understand!
They went to hit you. And I had to think twice about stopping them. You're right, baby. What does that make me? Get your hands on him! Get him! Yes, sir. Take him away! Please. Where are you taking my husband? He assaulted a police officer. Now we're just gonna question him. Daddy! Brooks, you stay there. Really disappointed me, Marcus. I'm just protecting my daughter. Nigga, that's a privilege you don't have. Take him away. No, 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 no. Dad! Stay back out late. What's the name of the white boy, Laura? You've been working with him. Uncle Dean. All right, you, you can go pack your bag, and you and Brooks go to Annie Bellman's house now. Let's go! I'll call you later. Brooks, let's go. Rose Clay and my partner Charlie just got back from the jail. When they got there, they found out that Marcus had not been charged with any crime and he had been released just minutes earlier. So that's another Negro on your head. My son can't stand because of the pain in his back from where he was clubbed. How dare you bring children out there? Leave with me! I'm sorry. Believe me, that was the last thing that we wanted to happen. But we are not going to stop now. Stop. Stop. stop! stop! As head of the Voters League, I'm going to meet with the mayor, and I'm going to ask him to guarantee the safety of the Negro people. And in exchange for that, the Voters League will make every effort to stop these protests at City Hall. I never looked him in the eye. And I've been always smiling at him. You see what they did? They beat me like a dog gross. They don't want, they don't want me to even have the thought. The thought that I'm a man. They gonna do the same. They gonna do the same thing to Brooks, and they gonna do the same thing to Brooks' kids, and they gonna do the same thing to their kids. And this has gotta stop. This has gotta stop, bro. I gotta do something. I gotta do something. Let's go to church. Marcus, please. Take me to the church, okay? Let's go to church. I would like the Voters League to call a vote on whether to endorse these protests. And that'll be the first vote. And then, 
I want to put on the table the issue of asking Mr. Dean and his partner to leave town, bring peace to our community. Over oh, my dead body. Marcus? Marcus? And let me take you to the hospital. OK. Matter of fact, I'm doing pretty good. Just, just let me be. Just go on with your meat, man. So sorry, Marcus. It's OK. It's the last time. Let's just go on with the meat. Well, I. I was going to call for a vote on asking Mr. Dean. No! Never again! Marcus, we're going to have and a if vote. And they won't do, Reverend, these young people are going to march tomorrow and the day after and the day after. I understand your pain, but that is not for you to and decide. And that includes my daughter. And not Neely or the Clan or any of these white sons of bitches going to ever hurt them again. I understand your hurt, but this is God's house. Do not use that language in here. Now, we're going to have a vote. I call a vote for a new leader of the Voters League. That's the Gregory. We know each other for a lot of years now, and I love you like a brother. But it's a new time. Yeah. In the rest of the South, you know what they're calling this? Freedom Summer. Why shouldn't it be Freedom Summer in Bogalusa, Louisiana? Yeah. I nominate Marcus Clay. Marcus has always dealt with the white management of the plant for us. He'd be good. I'd suck on that nomination. All those in favor of Marcus Clay becoming the new leader of the Voters League, raise your hands. Raise your hands. All those opposed. I can go along. Well then. It's done. Marcus. Right, come on, Marcus. Say Marcus. Reverend Gregory has served this church for many years. I have great respect for Reverend Gregory. He has always been there for me. I don't know what to tell y'all. I'm going to talk to these white boys here. They must have some idea. Truth is, I only know one thing for sure. What happened to our children today? will never, ever happen again. Or they will have to come through me. Reverend? So what's on your mind, Marcus? You killed white men? Didn't you, TJ? Yeah. How many? You told me. Two, three, you know of? In the war in Germany? Yeah. Why are we afraid now? Y'all hmm. crazy. I was in the war. I fought hard for my country. I was a tank commander. Archie, you and TJ served together in Kobe? I fought in the first war. You killed white men. I did. You remember Double V? Mm -hmm. What it meant to Negro soldier? Victory abroad. Victory at home. Victory against oppression and racism. We went you, Marcus. What happened to that victory? What you suggesting, sir? I'm suggesting we defend ourselves. Most of the Negroes live in Mapleton, so we secure it. Archie, TJ, you know how to secure perimeter? Yes, yeah. sir. First, we arm ourselves. Lock the plan out of our neighborhood. Second, we take night shifts at the plant so we can watch over our children when they march in the protest. Well, when do we sleep? You sleep when you dead. Third, we give arm escorts to these white boys so they can stay and organize so we can get that godforsaken paper plant desegregated and get the jobs we have coming to us. There was some groups like what you're talking about in Alabama, and I think in Mississippi. They made like little armies protected folks from the night riders. 
We get it, so can we. Marcus, ain't this taking things a little too far? It's called for, and you know it, Archie. If it's an army of one, then it's an army of one. I gave my word. Gentlemen, I've been waiting for this day my whole life. something daddy what i'm scared well i can make two reasons why you shouldn't be scared only two only two that's all i got but there's some good ones your grandma she always used to tell me god is on your shoulder god is on your shoulder right now i can feel him yeah What's the other? I'm a big, strong man, right? No one never let anybody hurt you. Yeah? Get back in bed. Go. Go, go. Go. Love you, boy. Help protect both the black and the white pack. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want any guns, any baseball bats. You want us to go? That's not what he's saying. That is exactly what I'm saying. Mr. Clay, this movement is nonviolent, and we will not resort to this. You ain't resorting to a damn thing. We are. As long as you stand down here and running these protests, and my daughter's marching in them, we're going to keep you alive. Well, then we won't march. We'll call it off. I'll pack up. No, you won't. Maybe we should compromise. Mike, Whoa, we need some kind Billy, of protection. John, you keep him company. Four hours, you get relieved. You know what, Marcus? You could go to hell. Nonviolence is the essence of everything this movement stands for. It is the essence of everything I stand for. We are supposed to be better than them. If we stay alive, we will be better than them. That's how I measure it. Alive is better than dead. And by the way, I'm already in hell. So don't you tell me about the essence of your summer vacation. The colored man been waiting in this shit for 400 years. You come down here to my town, try to tell me how to fight my fight? My fight? We'll be around every 10 minutes. You got your whistle? What's that under your leg? Good for you. So this is how we gonna live? For now, unless you know something else. You're telling me I got to choose between my children growing up with dignity or the life of my husband? I don't know an answer for that. Rose. I gotta go. Come on, man. Dragon, whatever the fuck he calls himself. You come down this area again, he gonna get a walk. Now you boys should get the hell out of here. Shut up! I'll beat your ass right now. We ain't like y'all. Let's get the hell on out of here. Just drive yourselves on out of here!
You know what we just done? And I live to see that day. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Like deacons defending their church. That was righteous. What y'all think about the name? The Deacons for Defense? Just. Deacons for Defense? Makes sense to me. It's a righteous name for a righteous call. I like it. The Deacons for Defense. Now, why won't you let Chief Neely arrest them? We know the names of most of them. Not only did they assault white men, but those Negroes have guns. William, you're a teacher, an intelligent man. You know what was going on out there in the night. Now, do we have to say it out loud? We need to control them. Now, if you can't do it with the hand of government, it is our obligation, our divine right, to lord it over the beasts. Let's get those white boys, Dean and Hildebrand, out at least. Those boys are communists. Just say the word and we'll bring them in. They are calls down there from Baton Rouge and New Orleans. They're white reporters, a Negro reporters. This is Life magazine. If we arrest Dina Hillebrand, those reporters will be all over it, and we don't even have anything to charge them with. So what if they're just missing? Or well, after what happened in Mississippi, you want the FBI down here? Sam, I'm just about 13 days away from bankruptcy. Why can't we just fire them? Take away their income. Who? All the niggers at the plant? You mean shut down the cornerstone of the economy of this town? So not the plant. The other jobs. Every person who cleans a toilet, or takes care of your children, or cooks your food, or fixes the brakes on your car, one third of this town is Negroes. There's everywhere. So you tell me who to fire first. You make it sound like we should be scared. Now, do you know who made that sandwich? Pour that water? The Klan can deliver a lot of votes, and we can take a lot of votes away. Well, then, don't vote for me, William, all right? Now, look. Give a list of names to Neely. He'll go out and check that they have permits for their weapons. He'll check their cars for violations. But other than that, I can't help you. Well, gentlemen, I will weed this field myself. I'm bringing in Klansmen from all over the state. Now, this is a crisis. Those Negroes have formed an army. If they succeed here, you think they won't do this in Alabama? Seems like it's growing. Best guess is more than 30 of them now. That leader's definitely Marcus Clay. He is like a rabid animal that is completely uncontrollable and needs to be put down. Now, who would like that privilege? Started with five men. Now look at them. Larger, stronger. Let me in! Yes, sir! Each squad stays within 100 yards of the other squad. Use your whistles. Don't start talking, then bunch it up with other squads. Use your eyes. See them before they see you. All right, let's go. Never again! Never again! Your beast comes to last! Your beast comes to last! Think it's for the fans! 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 When we met, we was always laughing and joking. We was closer. What happened? I 
key has got big. I look at him and I get scared. I don't think I could live if they got hurt. I'd rather live dying than let anything happen to them. Let the white man do whatever he wants. Just, just don't hurt my babies. Walk all over me. Just, just don't hurt them. I've been telling myself that. But it's over. You gotta keep yourself safe, Marcus Clay. Because I need you. They may kill me, Ron. But till that happens, I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna love the kids. I'm gonna love God. And I'm gonna live. Patterson paper, of course, 40% of the people in Bogalusa. The way Patterson paper goes, so goes this city. Well, we, we do not control this city. Yes, you do. Two of the five members of city council are Patterson paper employees. 70% of the income of Bogalusa comes from Patterson paper. What's your point? One, you've never hired any female Negroes to work in this factory. Two, all the workspaces are segregated. Three, Negro workers have passed aptitude and skill tests and still can't progress past the lowest paying jobs. Marcus, let me stop you for one second here. I've known you for a long time, and I respect your position as head of the voters' league, but it's gonna take some time. We're just one little factory here. Don't fool with us, Mr. Gower. You are part of the 88th largest corporation in the United States. You have net sales of $616 million, with assets of over $645 million. Really? I didn't even know that. Shall we bring the unfair promotional practices and the illegal segregated workplaces to the attention of the national media? Is that what it's going to take? No Negro workers have ever moved up to the position of truck driver or supervisor. T.J. McDaniels was beaten simply for putting his name on the list. We don't know anything about that. What? Look, it's a very nice idea to have a colored man as a supervisor, but it would mean at some point that he would have to supervise white men. You see, Patterson Paper, corporate headquarters. is in Seattle. I've already written the two vice presidents in charge of hiring there. Well, then you know that company policy dictates that Patterson will not go against any local customs, no matter how offensive or repugnant we personally may feel them to be. I see. You're right. Because where I come from, up north in Philadelphia, we like to drown redneck racists like cats. So that would be stop. okay, right? No matter how offensive or repugnant it happens to be, because that's just the way it is around here. You can leave. Yes, sir. I promise you, Mr. Gower, we will shut this place down. You better talk to him, Marcus. This is out of hand. I think you better, I think you better listen to him. I seen them drown three rednecks already. Bubbles coming up out the water and whatnot. It was awful. It was downright ugly. Jim, I'm standing here at the north entrance to the Patterson Paper Company. Now, as you can see, we have a large group massing right here in front of the main gate. As I understand that there's already been one... Just blocks from where I'm standing, a large protest has completely shut down Patterson Paper. 
This is a massive factory, and there are trucks backed up for several blocks that the protesters aren't allowing into the factory. Yeah. Uh, sir, the national press is here, and uh, we've got pickets Pickin in front of our building. And we're in goddamn national television. Get me the plant in Mogalusa. The orders come down from national headquarters in Seattle. We are going to be making some changes around the plant. From now on, all segregation in the plant is to be discontinued. We're going to share the bathrooms with the coloreds? Yes, the bathrooms will be desegregated. This is the letter from Seattle. Effective immediately. All areas will be permanently desegregated, not limited to, but including the cafeteria, workplaces, water fountains, locker rooms, and restrooms. This is by order of the company president and approved by the board of directors. Sending you this letter with tremendous urgency. Luke, you replace. Frankie, take his place. Listen, I really appreciate everything you've done for us. Just watching this... out for my daughter. Well, with all due respect, Mr. Clay, you might want to try talking to her. She'd like it if you communicated with her a little bit. She would. Very much so. She understands a lot more about you than you think she does. If I were you, I wouldn't get involved in my family business. Dangerous and violent situations brewing. Armed factions, we request the federal troops be brought to Bogalus to save both the black and white population. You scared? It's scared as I've ever been. The letter's right. Somebody gonna need protect. Let's go. Tremendous urgency. This is not simply a request, it is a plea. You got a minute? Yeah. Did you uh, get my memo on Bogalusa? Yes, I did. You have confirmation? We sent in some state police undercover, and they confirmed it for us. There is a war heating up down there. There are Negroes taking up arms. Now, the KKK is already well-armed and well-financed by the White Citizens Council, and they're organizing. We believe there are hundreds of KKK members coming into the area. You know where Bogalusa is? No. No, I had to look it up on a map. You heard national press about this before you started your investigation? No, I, I didn't. But listen, now, this is different. There is a militant Negro group that is armed and ready to fight. That's only happened a few times before. There are two armies gathering down there. Johnson's just got the National Civil Rights Bill through Congress. He's done enough damage to the South. He's a Southerner, for God's sake. He needs those states. He's not going to let us send troops down there unless it's called for. Well, what about the people of the city? The white people and the colored people? When that war breaks out, what happens then? God help him. like Paris and paper, telling us how to run our lives. <laughs> Taking our jobs. Spreading communism and niggerism to our community. They are taking our way of life. Tonight, I ask you to stand tall. Stand proud. Exalt in your whiteness. In your intelligence. Superiority. It's our turn now. White power, rain down on this great country of ours. White power. White power. White power. White power.
confirmed, Ma. 45 wounded, 35 hospitalized, six of them children. One woman was stripped down in front of her daughter. She didn't say what all they did to her. By the grace of God, nobody died. This only works, Ma, because if we can, the biggest thing is they do. We lost tonight, but I know we can. We reassign the men, fill up for the wounded, even up the squads. That's what we do. You can't fight the clan. Two of my guys were throwing rocks at them. Rocks, Marcus, against guns. We put more men on the perimeter. Put more men on patrol at the same time. Uh, Marcus, we can't do this. Not like this. You got a better idea. Three of our neighbors lost their homes. Man. This is one night. This is what it's about. They're going to be Gentlemen. losses. Gentlemen, please. We can't go back. So let's all take a deep breath. I have us a plan. There's a gentleman I can speak to, an old army buddy in New Orleans. Who is he? He runs the Negro Longshoremen's Union. What are we talking about, Otis? I'm talking about building up. I'm talking about real weapons. I'm talking about arming every one of us. We're going to give guns to a mob of angry niggas. The white man put us to work. Out in the fields, in the factories, and down on the docks. Everything for a thousand miles moves in and out of the docks in New Orleans. And colored men live half of it. Bananas, cars, guns. Sad boy, my boy. Oh, how you be? Good, good, yeah. Let's get these cars loaded and get the hell on out of here, huh? I can't take this. You give it to the church. You sure? You give it to the church. We thank you. All right, come on, let's go. Marcus, you better get over here. See, I'm 60. Shoot 600 rounds per minute. Look at these. Otis, what is this? A weapon. What's wrong? I've been to war already. I didn't like it then. The same it. war. We can't use this. If it comes to it, I'll use it. If it comes to it, it'll be the end of the world. Into our world, at least. No, man, you hand those out. I'm walking away from here. I'm not handing them out. Not yet. Otis, put them back. Put them down, Otis. Come with me. Gentlemen, we are not playing games. Hmm? I'm with you on this, Otis. Have a seat, Marcus. You want something? You've been missing days. Let's talk about letting you go. I covered all my shifts. I'm not supposed to say this. I'm just telling you what's being discussed. You're going to have real trouble. All right, dear. I'm just trying to help you. Yeah. Yeah. The letter says they sent down two busloads of clergy from New York and Detroit. I don't see any buses. Hold we are here on our own. Hold on. It... There's supposed to be a deacon posted here. Yeah, where is he? Make me smile. Give me a reason to pull this trigger. Now drop the gun, boy. Run, you nigger lovers! Run! Oh, 
now. You boys were given a good Christian warning, and you just didn't listen. Gentlemen, beat them with the strength of the Lord and the rage of the devil. Marcus, two things. No more violence. I'm begging you. And you? I'm coming back. Come on, watch. Take to the hospital. Go. Go ahead. Mr. Governor, these Nolan groups are the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and the Congress on Racial Equality. They're busting people in from all over the country. New York, Washington, Detroit. On the other hand, I got the Klan ready and for war. They're bringing people in from all over the state. Judge Chris Bear has ordered you and the Bogaloosa police to protect the protesters. You're going against a federal decree, Mr. Mayor. I understand that, sir. I've got colors here with automatic rifles, pistols, we even have some reports they have hand grenades. President Johnson's pissed off. He wants this to end. Didn't you tell me that God was going to help the people of Bogalusa? Just get your ass down there and end it now. Garrison. I'm a lawyer with the Department of Justice. Come on. Our position is we need to end the violence now before somebody's killed. That ain't gonna happen. You got children marching. You want me to just leave them to be shot or clubbed? No. I've already put together a case against the police, uh, Chief Neely and his deputies, that I'm bringing to the federal court. Thank you. I'm gonna force them to protect the protesters so you and your men don't have to. <laughs> Marcus, please. Listen, I know Mayor Martinson has already set up a meeting for you and him to sit down with the governor. Are you going to go to that? Start working this out? I'm thinking about it. You want me to stop the protest? I wouldn't if I were you. The name of the game is to make as much noise as you can for as long as you can. Eventually, the cavalry will come in. Oh, so you the cavalry now? I thought the cavalry was supposed to show up before they lynched the people. We got cemeteries filled with people waiting for y'all. Marcus. I ain't waiting for the cavalry. Sit up to me, Mr. Garrison. You don't want no pie? Yeah. All right, boys, y'all made your point. So let me tell you what we're proposing. You tell me, Mr. Governor, if I'm misspeaking. The prudent cause would be to hear your demands, talk about them, if there was a truth. Let everybody cool down, stop protesting, stop boycotting white businesses, and then we start to talk. Excuse me, you brought us down here to say stop and we can have a talk. We're already talking right now. 
Let's discuss it right now. Thank you. I brought you down here, you and the mayor, so we could end the violence. Let's get down to brass tacks. What do you boys personally want? And how can we help you? How can you help us? Okay, Ms. Gum, let me make this real simple for you. Desegregate the public spaces. Desegregate the city jobs. That's our starting point. Anything less is unacceptable, period. And as head of the Voters League, I can guarantee you that the boycotts and the protests will continue if our demands are not met. We will listen to your demands. I mean, I can't promise anything. Those are sweeping changes. That happen to be federal law. Our city is coming into line with federal civil rights laws, but right now, I'm asking you to take the first step. Stop protesting. Stop boycotting. When I urinate, it comes out bloody because of the damage done to my kidneys from a beating I took from your police department. So don't you dare ask me to take the first step. Well, I am sorry about that, Marcus, but I am demanding you end protests and boycotts. You can't demand a damn thing. All you guarantee me is more talking. That's what I'm asking you to take back to your people. Because I hear you may not even be the president of the Voters League by Saturday. Go to hell. Let's go. What is most important is we need the so-called deacons for defense to disarm and no longer maintain patrols. Excuse me. What are you talking about? Deacons for defense? What is that? A church group? You heard of it, TJ? Don't know nothing about it. You watch? Not me. We ain't heard of them. I'll tell you if I find them. You take care of yourself. T? Doing in the dark. Come over here. Come on. How'd you get so beautiful? Oh, Daddy. <laughs> no, I mean it. How did you get to be so beautiful? From you. You still scared? One day, I promise you, you're not gonna feel that way no more. I won't see me. Oh, yes. Come, come, Marcus. Come on in. Come, sit with us. Now, the congregation put together some boxes of food for you and your family, and we also raised a collection here. No, I can't. You got to provide for your family. Marcus, please. You look tired, Marcus. I am. Tired. Maybe you should uh, stay home tonight. Stay in tonight, Marcus. We got it covered. Marcus, maybe you should step down from the voters' league. 
What are you talking about? Nothing personal. We ain't even gonna discuss that. Nothing was achieved with the governor. After the blood that has been spilled, after the tears from marching every day, we are no further along. Marcus has given his life to this. This Please. can't go on forever. Please. What are you talking about? Please. Please. Did something. Listen, I've been in touch with Dr. King's folks. Asked them to send somebody down here to help us. What'd they say? Well, because of their stance on nonviolence, they said they cannot afford to be associated with us because of the deacons. We are on our own down here. It's because of Marcus that we can't get rid of you. Please, please, please. I have been living in fear of the Klan all my life. It was bred in me as a child, and it made me less than a man. But all of that has changed because of you. You freed me, son. You woke up something in me. So don't you stop. Don't you dare stop. And tomorrow, I'm gonna be marching with you. And I'm gonna march every day to change what's happening down here. And there ain't gonna be no change in leadership. Ain't gonna be no stepping down. Marcus is still in charge. That's right. Amen. 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 <laughs> now. You men, let's get these groceries over to Marcus' house. Be careful out there. Marcus, God bless you, my son. Keep the faith, Marcus. Keep the faith. You're winning everybody over. Where's your buddy? He's down at the office. We're both back. You're gonna go back and join the protest? Well, how you doing, Michael? Oh, not too bad, Marcus. Thanks for asking. They knocked out five teeth in the back of my mouth. Fractured a couple of bones. Good news is the doctor says that the bleeding in my liver is stopped. Oh, that's real good, Michael. Glad to see you back up on your feet. You want to be my friend now? You get on the floor, I'll go outside, see if I can find me some good old boys, kick you around a little bit. I tell them you don't like to defend yourself. They'll be lined up all around the corner. <laughs> you ready for real good ass whipping? <laughs> yeah, I am ready for a real good ass whipping, but no, I do not want to be your friend. I just thought maybe you might look at me differently once I had my face cracked open, but fuck it, you want to hate me because I'm white? Or you want to not trust me because I'm... Whatever, Marcus, I don't care. But I'm gonna be here, and I'm gonna be here fighting. All right, Dan. You wanna come over to my house, get something to eat? No, I really don't. Okay. Just a little respect for my effort, that's all I really want. Federal officer? Go ahead. Just the two men I wanted to speak to. I didn't know you two were friends. <laughs> What's going on? I brought a suit in federal court against the Bogalusa police and the Washington Parish police. We go Monday. I'd like you both to be there. Definitely. <laughs> Good. Marcus? If my friend goes, I go. What are y'all fixing to eat? Lester? Yes, Mr. Mayor? 
cease and desist. But Look, in reference to Marcus Clay, any orders you've been given, cease and desist. The governor does not want any more attention put here. Do you understand? I said, do you understand me? Yes, sir. Good. This is a list of Ku Klux Klan members. That's the list that I and other federal agents collected from our observations of the Ku Klux Klan activities. And uh, this is a list of the local Bogalusa police. You'll see that several members of the police department are members of the Ku Klux Klan. Captain Joseph Lawson, one of the defendants, is among them. <clears throat> Let's look at this movie you took. <clears throat> Now, I see photos and film in Bogalusa, and all I see are Confederate flags. Is there not one American flag in the town of Bogalusa? <coughs> I see the police doing nothing to protect those people. Turn it off. I gave the order once in July, and now here I am again. I am making this court decree for the last time. You stop beating and harassing and arresting and clubbing these people. You protect them. And you ensure their constitutional right to protest. The instant you do not, You'll be in violation of my decree, and you will be jailed. Is that clear? Also, these known Klan members, William Chase and Lester Conley, I'm issuing a declaration stating that these men cannot be within 100 yards of a demonstration. I will end this. We're adjourned. Marcus. Gentlemen, we won. At least acknowledge that. Victories are few and far between in this fight. You make the same rule a couple months ago didn't mean anything to you. Do you think the police listen to the federal government, Mr. Garrison? Do you know who the police listen to in Louisiana? Who? The Klan. Do you know what the Klan is, Mr. Garrison? Because for me, coming from up north, this has been one eye-opening experience. I know what the Klan is. I don't think you do. The Klan is not uh, beer-drinking rednecks with sheets on their heads. The Klan is an incredibly violent paramilitary fascist organization that dictates to the police, the local government, the school boards. It's more murderous, pervasive, and influential than any criminal organization in the United States, including the Mafia. And the only reason that Hoover and the rest of the world is not up in arms about it is because their victims are black. The only reason you're here is because somebody in the government didn't like seeing little black children being beat up on the news every night. You think I'm the enemy here? I risked my life coming down here. Mr. Garrison, I appreciate that, but the truth is, you're never gonna get hard white southern boys to protect Negroes. Don't underestimate me, Mr. Clay. See, if you're wrong, you're gonna go back to court and fight another day. You're gonna get another decree. But for me, it means somebody I know or love gets a bullet in their head. Let's just see who's right, Mr. Garrison. But we all know that that decree is gonna be tested, and when it is, the deacons, the deacons will be there. Over the past month, riots have broken out in protest to Judge Herbert Christenberry's court ruling. School integration is being strongly challenged by the Klan and other local white-only groups. A Klan spokesman has stated that this is a crucial test of local and state's rights. Parish and local police departments have been reluctant to enforce the court's degree. In Bogalusa, local Klan leaders have declared that they will make a final stand and test the Christenberry ruling by resisting the integration of Bogalusa High. The Deacon Sport events have vowed to defend the black students' right to integrate at all costs. All right, fellas. It's on. The 
See it? See it. You remember what I told you? Yes. Go to it. Okay, everybody. All right, y'all, get to your car. Come on. Everybody, get out of here. Get this bunch of animals. Everybody, get out of here. This bunch of niggas. They shouldn't be around us, you understand? Ready for a Take them down the back. Get them out of here. 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 Don't fire unless you fire the bull! I don't like this. Are you ready? Yes, sir! Yes, sir. I'm ordering you to put your weapons down right now. Quick, put down a damn thing. Let's just get them the hell out of here. Disarm yeah. your man right now. I'll confiscate these guns. I'm gonna die before somebody kicks this gun out of my head. You are under a federal order to protect these people. They hit us, they beat us, and all we do is lift up a gun to defend ourselves, and you go crazy. If you do not protect these people, you will be arrested, sir. You get the fuck out of my face, boy. Right. Charlie, I want you to go into the school. I want you to find a phone and call the Eastern District Federal Courthouse in Baton Rouge. All right. Well, wait, wait. Marcus, be reasonable. We know each other a long time. All of your men put their guns down. Why don't you get they good? It's time to take a stand. It's them or us. So I'm talking to you. All right, then. I'll put my gun down. Kristen Berry said you was going to defend my life. He said you're going to defend all these people's lives. It's time to end this. I made the call. Did you hear that? You're about to be arrested, Sheriff. I guarantee you that no matter what happens to me, there'll be more white blood than Negro blood running in the streets today. And that includes your blood, because you will be dead. That's the only thing you understand, isn't it? Aim! Damn it. Send you to your maker. God damn! Jay, put your gun down! I am not afraid. And I am no less of a man than you are. Put the gun down, Chase! I will not. I said put the goddamn gun down! Go to hell, Neely. I'm ordering you to put that gun down. It's over. Under federal mandate, these people have the right to assemble. And I have the obligation to guarantee their safety. You are under arrest. Traitor. You Judas. You're a disgrace to your white race. Cuff him and take him away. Don't think this is over yet, Marcus. You know why men wear hoods? Because they got no courage. You all put down your weapon or you will be arrested for violating the federal law. And I mean it. Arrest anybody who does not move out. Move out! Guns down. Let's go. I don't want you ever to forget. Take it 
for the fence! to see what happens with this integration thing. Your order will be ready tomorrow. See you then. May I help you? No, thank you. I'll call you if I need you. Okay. What do you think? It's nice. So your summer vacation's over. You sure you don't want to come over to my house, have some dinner like we talked about in church? I can't. There's still a couple rednecks down the road who haven't had a chance to whoop my ass yet. A lot of people could have died. I'll never subscribe to what you do. You know, I killed white men in Germany. People said they was evil, so that was all right. Now I defend myself against pretty much the same kind of man and you want me to feel like I'm not as honorable as you. That I should feel ashamed for protecting my family. No. No, that's not true. I don't want you to feel ashamed of a damn thing. Truth is, only reason anyone listens to us at all is because they're too afraid to deal with you. Thought I was going to have to give a gun to my son and tell him to go and make your way in the world. Is that what I want for him? You might have made it so he doesn't have to. It's been a long, long fight. I'm with you. I know that. You take real good care of yourself. Archie, take care of him. I will. Kill the brain. Goodbye, Marcus.
Spirituality is a way of accepting the fact that there is a spiritual force in the universe larger than all of mankind. But someone had to come along and invent a word called God. And someone had to say of another God and say, mine is better than yours. And someone had to create faith. Someone said, I have the true faith. Religion is the organization of spirituality into something that became the handmaiden of conquerors. Nearly all religions were brought to people and imposed on people by conquerors and used as the framework to control their mind. My main point here is that if you are the child of God and God is a part of you, then in your imagination, God's supposed to look like you. And when you accept a picture of the deity assigned to you by another people, you become the spiritual prisoners of that other people. The representation of God should always be the great. It should always be the black, because it can produce all things. The representation of God should always be the great. It should always be the black because it can produce all things. The representation of God should always be the great. It should always be the black, because it can produce all things. The representation of God should always be the great. It should always be the black, 